in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have tuned into the Voice of Deliverance broadcast coming from the Marshall Full Gospel Holy Temple Church located at 3949 West Pine Crest Drive, Marshall, Texas. The Honorable Bishop Larry B. Kill Sr. is the pastor and the dynamic co-pastor is Evangelist Margaret Kill. We invite you to come out and join us and be a part of these anointed power pack services where you can receive your miracle. Sunday school, 9.45 a.m., morning worship, 11 a.m., Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. If you have a prayer request, you may write us at P.O. Box 1928, Marshall, Texas, 75671, or you may call us at area code 903-927-2717. The broadcast is available by the means of radio, television, and internet live stream. That's Marshall Full Gospel Holy Temple Church, a church for all people. Now prepare your hearts for this anointed choir, after which the next voice will be that of Evangelist Alvin Phillips, and we shall receive him by the words of Amen.
somebody call his name? Who's the one that saved you? Who's the one that raised you? Who healed your body? Call his name. Tell somebody before you find your seat, say, neighbor, he saved my soul. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. That's that's enough for me to have church right there. Look at one more person and say, neighbor, he saved my soul. I was on my way to hell. I said I was on my way to hell. But he saved my soul. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. So glad to be saved. Put your hands together for the choir. Amen. The song out of their soul. We thank God. Amen. For anointed singing. We honor the Lord today for our leaders. Amen. Our pastor. In the person of the Honorable Bishop, Dr. Larry B. Kill Sr. Our man of God. Come on, let's raise a praise for the man of God. Amen. Is in the house on today. Amen. Pastor, in this one church this year will mark 52 years. Amen. God has been good to us down through the years. He's yet keeping us. We thank God for our co-pastor and first lady. Amen. Evangelist Margaret Kill. Come on, let's raise a praise for the woman of God. Thank God for the man and woman of God. To our overseers, Apostle Herman and first lady, Danielle Murray. To the memory of our founders, Apostle Lobias and Dr. Evangelist Shirley Murray. Now, will you put your hands together for Jesus Christ on today? Our Lord and our Savior, our soon coming King. Amen. We thank God for all of our visitors. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Certainly, we count it an honor and a privilege to be in God's house one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. What a mighty God we serve. I said, What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We are so grateful to stand before you on today. Amen. To tell you something on behalf of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to get into the word of the Lord on today. We're not going to tarry. Amen. But how many know God is still speaking in this hour? Amen. If there ever was a time that God is speaking, he is speaking now. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, what he's saying is, amen, if you're going to live this life, you need God's word because God's word is our guidance. God's word is our map. It is what leads us, amen, to where it is that we are going. How many is on their way to heaven? Let me see you wave your hands if you intend and purpose to be in heaven one day. Amen. And if you're going to make it to heaven, you need the word of God to get you there. We're going to the book of Acts. Going to the book of Acts. Chapter number 16. The book of Acts, chapter number 16. We will commence reading at verse 25. And we will conclude our reading at verse 27. When you have it, say amen. Acts 16 and 25. The Bible says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, somebody shout suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately somebody shout immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled thank God for the reading of his holy word on today may God add a blessing to the hearers and by faith the doers 
of his holy word. The Bible says in the 25th verse, or the 26th verse, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Amen. I want to talk real quickly from the subject today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, a sudden breakout. That's what I want to talk about today, a sudden breakout. Out. Look at your neighbor and declare it. Say, neighbor, I declare, declare that God's getting ready to give you a sudden breakout. Oh, oh, he's getting ready to give somebody a sudden breakout, a sudden shift, a sudden breakthrough. And oh God, I wish, amen, that the children of God could really receive that in the house on today. In fact, amen, if your neighbor didn't say nothing to you, just prophesy to yourself and say, God's giving me a sudden breakout. God is giving me a sudden breakout. The book of Acts is a very powerful book. It is written, amen, if you will, as a continued letter to a man of God by the name of Theophilus, a personal name meaning a friend of God or one who loves God, a believer that, uh, that represents prominence. Uh, Theophilus come from prominence. Greeks are people who had a little something going for them. They were of the upper echelon of life, if you would, which is perfect because it lets us know that Jesus uh, and salvation and breakthrough is not just for poor folk. You know, some people believe that, that their salvation is just for the poor and just for the downtrodden. And sometimes we can diminish the gospel to be only, amen, for people that are going through or people who don't have nothing. Sometimes we can diminish the gospel only for people, amen, who always seem to need a miracle. But my brothers and sisters, one thing you'll learn about life is that life will put you in a situation that money can't get you out of. Yes, it will. Sometimes life will put you in a situation to where you can't pay your way out of that circumstance that you're in. I wish I had a witness in the room. You literally need God to do the supernatural. You need God to touch the hearts of others. You need God to intervene and to bring a healing. And this is what gives us good news about this book of Acts, that it is a continuation from the book of Luke. It is a continuation from the Gospels. The book of Acts, brothers and sisters, amen, continues after Jesus Christ has died on the cross. And he lays in the grave for three long days, gets up on the third day with all power in his hands. He walks the earth, the Bible says, for 40 days after he got get up off the grave. After walking the earth for 40 days, he then ascends to the Father. And when he ascends to the Father, amen, he then leaves and sends his apostles or his disciples to an upper room in Jerusalem. It is in the upper room where they wait on the promise of the Father to come to them. Amen. Which is the promise of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. And what makes the book of Acts, amen, so imperative or important is because even though we acknowledge the New Testament starting with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that testament isn't set in order until first death takes place. That's what happens with a testament. You know, when someone writes a will and a testament, it doesn't really go into action until that person dies. Have I got a witness? Amen. That word testament represents a new birthright. It represents a new covenant. Amen. A new decree that's given to the people of God. It means that you're coming out of the old decree and you're stepping into uh, the decree of the new. But you can't come into the decree of the new until first something dies. It is the death that releases the promises of the New Testament. That's why we called it the New Testament, the old covenant, amen, the new covenant. But it cannot happen until death happens and blood is shed. So it's after the death of Jesus, amen, that the New Testament is then birthed. And the new covenant now goes into action. The book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. It is where the church is birthed. Amen. We walk into Acts chapter 1. Amen. Coming into Acts chapter 2. Here it is. They are waiting on the promise of the Father. 
the infilling of the Holy Spirit that, that he tells them is going to come upon them. Uh, Jesus even tells them in John chapter 14, he says, I've got to go. I've got to leave you. As a matter of fact, he starts off by saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, he said, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Thomas then says, Lord, uh, my God, where are you going? And how shall we know the way? Jesus looks at Thomas and he tells him, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. He says, but I will not leave you comfortless. But I'm going to send you another. Oh God, I wish I had time to really deal with that on today. I can't work and stop right here, but I'm going to send you another comforter who shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. This is where we get into Acts chapter 2 where the comforter is now sitting within because up until the book of Acts, the comforter or the spirit of God was sitting upon. Oh, but because of what happened in Acts chapter 2, we got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. In Acts chapter 2, before then it would sit upon us. But in Acts chapter 2 now, we got filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost. And this is where the church was birthed. Don't get it twisted. There would be no church without God's spirit. Uh, there would be no ecclesia without the Holy Ghost. No, you can't say you're in church and you don't have the Spirit of God down on the inside. No, you just around church. But it's only when you get the Holy Ghost down on the inside. Now you have become a part of the church. Yeah, it is the Holy Ghost that makes the church relevant and I know that they told you that church ain't relevant no more that's uh, that's what people are saying they told you that it's not necessary no more uh, they're saying that the church don't mean nothing anymore and you ain't got to go to church no more but you don't you get it twisted on today that's folk uh, who ain't been baptized uh, that's people who have not been submerged uh, and have not been filled with the spirit of God When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you understand that we are relevant because of what we have down on the inside of us. We're relevant now. He writes this letter because my brothers and sisters, it's in Acts that the gospel expands not through human strength, but the gospel is expanded through opposition. It's expanded through persecution through demonic forces coming up against them and worldly powers and principalities and governmental oppression and language and cultural barriers and intense suffering and bloody persecutions. Uh, unjust imprisonments. Unbelief. And even shipwrecks, yeah, even snake bites and all type of threats to try and slow down the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, but one thing they learned is that opposition and suffering and persecution did not slow down the progression of the gospel. But somehow it seemed like it sped up the progression of the gospel. So while we're running from storms and, and running from trials and running from tribulations and all type of bad situations that come up in our lives, what you're running from could be the very force that that's pushing you uh, into your next place in God. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. 
through the power of the Holy Ghost that's resting down on the inside of them, the gospel begins to spread beyond geographical and ethnicity and culture and gender and wealth. The gospel begins to spread. Many of these barriers appear so strong that you would think it would bring a sense of discouragement to the apostles. But the apostles keep on preaching the gospel. They keep on preaching through riots and through all types of things that the enemy would try to bring in their path and like it because I like this because he makes it very clear that no one is beyond the saving power of Jesus Christ tell somebody nobody is beyond the saving power of Jesus Christ. Uh, I got to help somebody on today. Uh, I want to give you good news here brothers uh, and sisters uh, and tell you that no one uh, is beyond the saving grace uh, and power of Jesus Christ. Uh, not even your son. Uh, not your spouse. Uh, not your daughter. Uh, not even your mean boss. Uh, not the folk that don't like you. Uh, not even the folk you don't like. Uh, no one it's beyond the saving power of Jesus. If God can save you, he can save anybody. Uh, God can deliver you, he can deliver anybody. Uh, my God today, uh, if God can bring you out, uh, he can bring anybody out. Uh, I wish it was somebody here in the room uh, who didn't forget uh, where they came from. Uh, I know you're saved now. Uh, I know you're speaking in tongues now. Uh, I know you're running for Jesus now. Uh, I know you're a prophetess and an evangelist now. Uh, and you got your own Facebook ministry now. Uh, but if God could save you, God can save anybody. If he can pick you up and turn your life around and have you sitting up in church on this great Sunday morning, God can save. Tell somebody God can save anybody. God, God can save anybody. Somebody needs to hear that today because there's somebody under the sound of my voice. You think you've done something so wrong. You think you've strayed so far that God's hand is not long enough to stretch where you are and pull you out of the sin that you're in right now. I come to tell you that God can save to the utmost. Jesus saves. He can save anybody. Don't you give up on your child. Yeah. Don't you give up on your neighborhood. Don't, don't you give up on the drug dealer. Don't you give up on the gang banger. Don't you give up on those who look like they have lost their way. Let me encourage you today. God can save a witch if he want to. Yes, he can. He can save a warlock if he want to. Wish I had some help in the room. The old saints believe that you could come into the church drunk. And leave out those doors sober and full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my God, God can save anybody. Got to hurry. The gospel is spreading now. From the day of Pentecost, we see the church is expanding. The people of God get full of the Holy Ghost. And when they get full of the Holy Ghost, they begin to minister the gospel message to people, even in their own native tongue and their own native language. They get full of the Holy Ghost and they begin to minister the gospel to other people, even in their own native tongue and language. They get full of the Holy Ghost uh, and they begin to minister the gospel to people uh, even in their own native tongue uh, and their own native language. Uh, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and it's burning down on the inside of you, uh, it'll cause you to speak uh, in other tongues uh, and you won't be able to keep it uh, to yourself. Uh, you, won't, uh, you have to tell somebody uh, about the good 
goodness of Jesus Christ. And I just believe that the hour is coming back to the body of Christ where salvation hits the church in such a way. I'm not just talking about people joining the church because anybody can join the church. But I'm talking about God saving people, taking people off of the streets, taking the taste of alcohol out of folk mouth, taking the habit of crack cocaine that desire way. How many believe that God is able to save? That's my prayer. That's my prayer that God would let salvation flow through the land. My God, that people would be asleep and in their sleep, Jesus would visit them and bring them under conviction that he would give them dreams that they won't even rest until they come running saying, what must I do to be saved? Talking about God bringing in prostitutes. Y'all ain't talking. I'm talking about God saving street walkers. Yes, yes. Saving them because we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, you ought to take them to work with you. You ought to take them to the family reunion. Take them to people who you know can't stand you. Take them to those same people. You ought to make it bold that I'm saved. You ought to be bold with it and declare I'm sanctified. Be bold and tell somebody I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I want to know, do you know Jesus? Uh, Folks swapping members nowadays. But folk ain't getting saved. People joining the church nowadays. But people's lives are not being changed. Oh, but somebody ought to just wave your hand right where you are. In fact, raise that right hand in the air. Just, just wave that right hand because that's the hand of authority. And just declare it in this house. God is saving souls. Come on, wave that right hand in the air. Like you really believe it from the bottom of your heart. And say, in this house, God is saving. He's baptizing folk. People are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. They were full of the Holy Ghost, spreading the gospel. 3,000 souls added to the kingdom of God. In Acts chapter 2, by the time you get to Acts chapter 4, it's almost up to 13,000 souls. The church begins to grow rapidly because of the movement of the Holy Ghost that was down on the inside. The church is growing. People are being added. Souls are being snatched out of the hand of the enemy and we see the great ministry of Peter but then in the book of Acts you see Acts change where the baton is thrown from Peter and it is now given to Paul Paul who has that Damascus road encounter with Jesus Christ that literally changed his whole life God gives Paul a revelation and Paul begins to start his ministry he goes from killing Christians to now being a Christian. Goes from killing Christians to now leading Christians. And now Paul feels this pull to go down to Macedonia. God is advancing Paul's gospel ministry in a quick way. Somebody say quick. Yeah, things are happening quickly. Things are happening suddenly. Uh, the word suddenly means something done swiftly or unexpectedly without warning. It means something done out of nowhere. And I want to tell some people in this room today and tell you that the Lord is about to give you an out of nowhere type of shift. Oh, I wish I had somebody in the room with faith enough to believe that God is giving ready uh, to give you a miracle uh, and it's coming out of nowhere. Uh, you weren't even expecting uh, what God was getting ready to do. Uh, you weren't even thinking about it. Uh, the Bible says now to him that's able uh, to do exceeding uh, abundant uh, above all that we could ask or think. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody. Next to you, you ought to look at them and prophesy. Say, neighbor, I prophesy today that out of nowhere, God's going to give you a breakthrough. Out of nowhere, God's going to heal your body. Out of nowhere, God's going to meet that need. Out of nowhere, somebody shout suddenly. You didn't even see it coming. You didn't even know this thing was getting ready to happen. You, yeah, yeah, you didn't even know God was getting ready to do it uh, this way. Uh, but you've been waiting uh, and waiting and waiting uh, and wondering when God uh, was going to move on your behalf. Uh, oh, but I come to tell you today uh, that the wait uh, is getting ready to be over. Uh, I wish I had at least 15 people uh, in the room uh, with enough faith to believe uh, that God getting ready to do the supernatural and the miraculous. Yeah. 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 What took others five years, God's going to do it for you in five minutes because it's coming out of nowhere. What others been praying for over half of their life, he's getting ready to do it for you and it's coming out of nowhere. It's going to be quick. It's going to be fast. It's going to be sudden. God's going to do it just like that. Okay, okay. okay. Somebody ought to just declare it. Say, this is my year of an out of nowhere blessing. This this is my year. Okay, I'll, rest, I'll take that, Lord. This is my year. For the out of nowhere. This is my year. For the suddenly. This is my year. For the straight way. This is my year. For the immediately. This is my year. This is my year where God's getting ready to speed some stuff up. And that's what we see all through Acts, even leading up to chapter 16. I got to get out of here. We're going to see some words. You can help me. You can walk through it with me. You're going to see these words over and over. You're going to see the word sudden. Somebody say sudden. You're going to see the word straightway. You're going to see the word quick. You're going to see the word fast and immediately. I said you're going to see the word sudden, straightway, fast, and immediately. I dare you to repeat that with me. Somebody say sudden, straightway, quick, fast, and immediately. And I declare today, that's how it's getting ready to happen in my life. God's going to do it just like that. Sudden, fast, quick, straight away, immediately. He's going to move some things quickly just for me. I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm talking about me. God's getting ready to do it. And my testimony is, and he did it suddenly. When you study, that's all right, praise him. When you study a text, you ought to be able to sum up a chapter or even a portion of scripture in one phrase or in one word. My God, if I was to sum up chapter 16 in one word, I would sum up chapter 16 and that one word would be rescue. Somebody ought to shout rescue. Uh, sudden rescue. Yeah. Uh, quick rescue. Uh, you see it all through cha the chapter text. Uh, open up in chapter 16. Uh, when you read the opening verses uh, in chapter 16, uh, I know you've heard of Timothy. Uh, Timothy, y'all sit down. Uh, Timothy is Paul's spiritual son. Uh, Paul birthed Timothy. He birthed him out spiritually. Uh, it's very interesting if you read, uh, you'll see that Timothy his mother was a Jew 
but his father was Greek. Yeah. His mother was a Jew. His father was Greek. And when Paul stops by Timothy's mother's house, Paul understands that Timothy is in dire straits. He understands this because most of the time the family went according to the religion of the father. It was whatever the father said. Y'all ain't talking. Whatever the father said it would be, that's what it would be. And I know we know that Greeks serve all types of gods. Yeah, they do. All types of people. All of these different names. If you ever looked into the Greek mythology, they serve all kind of gods. They worship all type of statues and, and beings and people. But Paul gets to Timothy's mother's house. And Paul already knowing the lineage of Timothy's mother and his grandmother. I reminded, he told him in his book, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is within you. He said it first dwelt in your mother and your grandmother Eunice. He said, and I'm persuaded to believe that same faith is in you also. I don't tell somebody, I don't care who your daddy is. <laughs> uh, he said, that same faith is in you. When Paul gets there, Paul understands that this young man is unsafe. But there's a call on his life. And Paul rescues, somebody say rescue. He rescues Timothy out of that house and takes Timothy and brings him with him for the ministry. Yeah. He gives Timothy a sudden breakout. Uh, he breaks him out of that religious type of bondage uh, and brings him to a place uh, of breakthrough. Uh, we see Paul, uh, he leaves Timothy house. Uh, the Bible says he didn't go down uh, by a riverside. Uh, and this is where we see the church uh, at Philippi begins to take form. Uh, down by the riverside. Uh, and Paul is down there uh, by the riverside. Uh, he begins to preach the gospel with so much authority and power that Lydia says Paul before you leave this region I want you to come to my house and share this same gospel with my family members the Bible says Paul leaves Timothy house and Paul leaves the riverside and now he goes into Lydia's house and by the time Paul gets done preaching in her house the Bible says as he rescues the whole household. Paul doing some preaching. Saves a whole household. These people wanted to know who was this Jesus that Paul is preaching about. He's breaking yokes. He's breaking bondages. All over the text, Paul is continually breaking these people out of a spiritual type of bondage. Paul leaves Timothy house. He leaves the riverside. Paul leaves Lydia's house. And now Paul is on his way deeper into Macedonia. And while he's on his way, the Bible says that there is a young girl walking up behind him that has been bought by the Pharisees. The Pharisees, if you will, have kind of pimped her out in a way. They're paying her huh, so that she will sort of swindle huh, Paul in another direction huh, they're trying to use her huh, as a diversion huh, and Paul is in the streets walking huh, and all of a sudden huh, this young girl huh, starts singing their praises huh, talking about how great they are huh, talking about how wonderful they are huh. these men huh, are the servants huh, of the most high God the text suggests that this young girl is moving in sort of a seductive spirit. They call this type of seduction in the Greek the spirit of pythos. That's where we get our word python and a python snake. What he does is he wraps himself around you and he wraps himself and if you're not careful you'll think that he's wrapping himself huh, as a way to embrace you huh, but he's really not wrapping himself huh, to embrace you huh, but to suffocate you huh, and to destroy you huh, and a python huh, they don't like to eat anything 
dead. He wants you to still be kicking. He wants you to still be breathing. He wants you to still have life in you. And everybody that's singing your praise might not be on your side. Everybody that's saying how good you are might not be good for you. Everybody talking good about you. They may be talking about you because they're trying to suffocate you. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that ain't no hug. No, it ain't. That's not a hug. That's the devil trying to steal, trying to kill, and trying to destroy. That thing trying to kill you. It's trying to suffocate you. It's trying to take the life out of you. But Paul turned around and looked at that demon and told that devil, shut up. Every time the devil sneak up next to you, trying to embrace you, to take your life, start telling you stuff that sounds good, but you know it's not the will of God. You ought to turn around and tell the devil, Shut up! Somebody ought to say it today. Tell the devil. Shut up, my God, today. And the Bible says he cast the devil out of that young girl. And I came to tell somebody that's under my voice today. I feel in the spirit the devil is loosening his grip right now. That grip that he has on your son. That grip that he has on your daughter. On your husband. On your wife. That grip he's loosening right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. He's loosening his grip. Shout yes somebody. rescues uh, he rescues Timothy he rescues Lydia and her entire house and now he rescues this young girl who is possessed with a spirit of divination they have what I like to call a breakout yeah he literally comes in and breaks them out quick Fast, straightway, immediately, he comes in and he breaks them out. And preacher McCowan, the devil gets mad. Don't you doubt believe that because you got free, that the devil is excited about your freedom? Don't you doubt believe because you got delivered, that the devil is ecstatic that you got delivered? In fact, the devil gets mad every time God snatches a soul from his grip. The devil gets upset. So, brother, too, the Bible says uh, that they drew Paul and Silas uh, before the magistrates. Uh, they took them into jail uh, because they heard about what they were doing, uh, how they were preaching the gospel, uh, how they were casting devils out. Uh, the Bible says uh, they threw them in stocks. Uh, they chained them up uh, by the hands and the feet. Uh, and the Bible says uh, Paul and Silas uh, were in jail. Uh, the watcher uh, was keeping the jailhouse. Uh, but at midnight, uh, I didn't come to preach about midnight. Uh, I preached at another time. Uh, but at midnight, uh, the Bible says, uh, suddenly... Uh, I'm preaching this at the wrong church. Okay. Uh, suddenly, uh, an earthquake uh, began to take place. Uh, my God, today, uh, the foundation uh, was shaken uh, right where they are. Uh, suddenly, uh, he broke the chains. Uh, suddenly, uh, he loosed the bondage. Uh, 
suddenly the Bible says they were set free but they weren't set free until Paul and Silas began to open up their mouth and I come to tell you the devil can bind your hands he can bind your feet but where he messed up is when he left your mouth open because with this mouth I'll glorify God if the devil can shut your mouth he'll have the victory but I'm looking across the room for somebody that's got a mouth they can open it up and say I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth somebody anybody everybody open up your mouth give God come on somebody ought to shout Somebody ought to shout. Open up your mouth. Let out a shout. Open up your mouth. Let out a shout. Shout until chains are broken. Shout until bondages begin to break. Shout until God saves your loved ones. Shout until God delivers your son. Shout until God gives you a miracle. Don't you dare. Let the devil muzzle your mouth. But open up your big mouth and shout. Wish I had a witness. Wish somebody would shout. Shout until chains are broken. Shout. Shout until disease leaves. Shout. 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 Until God works on the streets. Shout. Until God saves, delivers, and sets free. Shout. of this ministry what separated full gospel holy temple 
from a lot of other ministries in the early 60s was because people believe that you have to tarry. Y'all ain't talking. For the Holy Ghost. But there's so many instances in the Bible where the Bible says the Lord breathed on them. And immediately, y'all ain't talking. Immediately, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that people were getting filled with the Holy Ghost in the shadow of Apostle Peter. They didn't have to tarry deep. But suddenly, immediately, quick, fast, straightway, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they tell me in the 60s and 70s that there was a young man preaching in Dallas that you could be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. And you didn't have to wait and tarry for days and tarry for weeks. But how many know God is a right now God? Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the God I serve is a right now God. And he'll never fail you if you trust in him. He's a right now God. He can save you right now. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. And if there's somebody in the room today, you need something from God. You'll say, Brother Alvin, I don't need it next week. I don't need it next month. I don't need it next year. But I need it right now. Come on down here. I said, come on now. You need to be saved. You need to be delivered. You need the Holy Ghost. You need healing in your body. Come right now. <laughs>